Hello everyone and welcome back to my podcast, Straight White Whale. It's been a week, I missed you motherfuckers. Before we get into it, I just want to say the podcast is sponsored by Merchant City Medical. They're a hair transplant place, that's where I got my hair done. I think it's looking pretty good today. I don't have any gel on it or anything, so it's a wee bit of a bed hair, but... If you're like me, if you're a young guy and you're self-conscious about losing your hair or going bald, you can get in touch with Merchant City Medical and they do hair transplants, liposuction, they can fix your teeth. If you're a girl, you can get your lips done or Botox and they're a very good company based in Glasgow. They're matching the prices of Turkey hair transplants, so you don't need to fly over to Turkey anymore. You can get it done in Glasgow for the exact same price, and I would imagine if you did go to Turkey and something went wrong, um, you wouldn't need to fly back. Like, how much of a pain in else would that be? You just keep everything in Glasgow. It's cheap as chips. You can pay a deposit. Pay it up monthly, and what date's it today? This is the 26th of January. My last payment of my hair transplant came off today. Whoop so whoop. I paid a £500 deposit, and then over the space of, I, I don't even know how many months, I paid like £200 a month or something, and my last payment's today. So... Honestly, troops, if it's getting you down, if it's making you depressed, get in touch with Paul. You can Google it. It will come up in the screen. And it, I mean, it might not be the best thing that you'll do in your life. Your life might still be shite, but you'll have an amazing hairdo. <laughs> eh? That's it. How's that for an advert? Brilliant, mate. So there we go. Let's get started and let's get in about the podcast. Paul, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Paul's here. We've also got a friend sitting in today, Kieran Burns. Hello. Hi, Kieran. How are you? I'm very well, mate. Thanks. Kieran is the host of the All About Ability podcast. Um, if you would like to see me on that, I was on it last week. So get Kieran on uh, Twitter. What's your Twitter handle again, mate? It's well, if you just type in All About Ability, you'll find it. But just put in Kieran Burns, and you'll find me as well. Yes. So give Kieran a follow. Give Paul a follow, I know where you met. Nah, uh, fuck that. Rebel City, Paul. <laughs> Hi, mate. Aye. Aye. Couple of boys. The boys, man. The boys are in. The boys <laughs> are in the day. The boysies. <laughs> right, so how was your week? Well, Tell me your story. I had a Let's boo-boo on Monday. It. I went for uh, I went for food, right? So this year, usually I would have a Costa in the morning and I've kind of like, nah, I'm going to give that up. It's too much money. It's like fucking 200 quid a month in coffee. It's fucking ridiculous. So I've bought, I've got like a Dolce Gusta pod machine, which isn't quite as high caffeine as like going and getting a fucking super strength Costa coffee, right? Mm -hmm. So Monday I was like, do you know what? I'm going to get a Costa. It's like the 20th or whatever it was, the 22nd. I've done really well. I'm going to treat myself to a Costa. So I went and had my Costa, then me and the missus went down to the south side, had a bit of food, got some black pudding, some poached eggs, that was great. Walking back to the train station in the south side and I jumped down the bottom two steps and I literally shorted. Oh, <laughs> like... Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, literally shot myself. I'm like a 40-year-old man <laughs> that shot himself in the fucking south side of Glasgow on Monday. And I had to, like... Just stand still for a bit. I was like, oh no, man, it's running down the back of my leg. It wasn't, thankfully. Like, it was like, but my mind was like going through all these mad, crazy fucking scenarios. But basically, what happened was is that like a, a, a squidge of like watery <laughs> shite was like in between my arse cheeks for like the south side of Glasgow, go on the train, fucking toilets out of order. I'm like, oh my fucking God. Go all the way to Central. I must have like duck walked <laughs> to Central Station, got to the toilets and had to bin my boxers and everything, man. It wow. was fucking tragic. That was uh, quite ironic. That's like um, something from The Secret because I was talking about shit in my pants. You know, I thought that. Two days before you shot it. I thought that. And I, and was you that were, a manifestation? Yeah, you were like giggling and stuff in the background. <laughs> I knew that you were laughing, so maybe it was a bit of karma. Mate, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> and then I was like to myself, has this ever happened before? And I'm like, aye, man, every time I drink Buckfast, 
I like need to like clench. Mm-hmm. Like I just the next day, if I've got a fart brewing, I need to clench if I'm gonna fart. But this was like it wasn't even like I let a fart out and you know folded through or whatever. I literally like did a pure wee jump in the last two steps, and as I hit, it went. <laughs> so and I looked at my bird, and she was like, "You had the look of shock in her face." <laughs> I was just like, oh, "I've shot myself." I was like that wee guy, see that wee guy, yeah. the pure mummy. I, I think I've shot my pants. I was literally like that to my missus. <laughs> Did she know straight away? Did she go? What happened? No. Well, I. She was like, "Pure, what's up with you?" And I was like, "I think I've shot myself." <laughs> <laughs> Was it good boxers as well? Calvin Klein's, mate. Oh, mate. That's a gutter. I know, mate. Straight in the bin, but man, there was just... It wasn't even that bad. Mm. It wasn't like a full and shite. It mm. was like a splatter, like I said. like a fu- But the boxers were going in the bin, man. Like, so was it the coffee, the eggs, or the was, black pudding? It was the coffee, mate. It was the caffeine, like I said. Got another story where I was walking to my ma's after a night on Buckfast. And it's like a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon, and I had to pretend that somebody rang me on my phone, like somebody phoned me. I had to stop still in the middle of a busy street and just take my phone out and go, hello, and what look about, because I had to just stand still, because if I kept walking, I was going to do what I did. That on is Monday. mental. So it's caffeine, mate. It's weird that you should bring that up, because I've got that down as one of my notes. Started drinking coffee again uh, yesterday. Um, what was I doing yesterday? I had something on. Was I doing a podcast for somebody? I was doing, what day was David? it yesterday? Was it David's? No, Tuesday. Was that? Uh, I can't remember what I was doing during the day, right? I was doing some work related stuff mm. and I had two coffees uh, just in a rush and I've been cutting down in the caffeine, right? Um, I've been treating myself to the cold brew stuff, like maybe one or two, like those. Uh, they cold cafe lattes for Tesco like two uh-huh. a week, but I've not been drinking black coffee every day. Right. And I had uh, two coffees yesterday, and I swear to God, man, it was like cocaine fucking paranoia just gripping my chest. And I'm thinking, why? How the fuck am I doing this? Like, coffee's kind of shite, Aye, but mate. I can't stop drinking it. Aye, for sure, mate. I, I know people that have took panic attacks after Aye. like a caffeine cleanse. And then they go straight back to Starbucks and get their favourite coffee. And it's like, you don't have a tolerance for that. Like, yeah. your body literally starts shaking. You get like, you can overdose in caffeine, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and people don't realise, see tea, tea's got caffeine in it and they drink it late at night and it can fuck your your sleep your pattern up. Pattern. So I've been taking magnesium and zinc and I've added some 5-HTP to it. And I've started taking it before bed. Mm-hmm. And see, last night, I had the weirdest fucking dream of my life, man. <laughs> see, my cousin, right? My cousin lives in my street. And the dream that I had was he had a a, a mini Mercedes car. Like, it was a toy for a child. Mm-hmm. But I could sit in it and drive it. And it was snowing. And I went round to his house and I grabbed it. And I tried to drive it through the snow and it wasn't moving. <laughs> and I was like, right, fuck that. I can't be bothered. All of a sudden, this guy appeared by my side with a chip and pin machine. And he's like, yeah, right, that's 70 quid. And I was like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, yeah, you tried to drive the car, so it's 70 quid. And I was like, I don't know who you are, mate. <laughs> and you ever get that way in a dream when somebody tries to fight you or something and it never really works out or you freeze or you get scared uh-huh. this was the first time in a dream i was like ah, absolutely not you cunt i'm no fucking getting you fucking 70 quid and then my cousin came out his house and i was like ah, who's this cunt i don't even think he was scottish he was like russian or something and i was like ah, who's a fucking gangster or something so that's what 5htp does before your bed and i woke up at eight o'clock and i just like totally what a sleep but uh crazy, you ever get jealous dreams. of like kids like see that the wee mercedes motors like the the best that i got when i was away was like a fucking basic like fuck all like that anyway there was uh, no okay like, family members <laughs> but no do you ever look at wayne's a day and think ps5 fucking like literally like petrol powered fucking toy cars that they could <laughs> go and drive about their back garden like Aye. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I was wearing my brother's jumper when I was a wee guy. Right, uh, yeah, I got a pass me down racer bike that when I came off the saddle, whacked me in the balls because it was too big for me. <laughs> uh, I feel like I need to get this out of the way as well. Um, it oh. was Burns Day yesterday. Oh, we're beefing. 
Well, it was Burns Day yesterday, and I tweeted, um, "Does any something along the lines of Does anybody think Burns Day is overrated? Haggis is a bit shite. Obviously, that's not true. Haggis is amazing, but I wanted to tweet it to annoy cunts. Uh, right. um, Rabbi Burns is a cunt. Whiskey's shite, but Haggis is alright. But I never tweeted Haggis is alright. Everybody was like, "Ah, you call yourself a Scotsman? The fuck off." <laughs> he was a fucking hoolmeister, all right. He was a unionist as well, mate. I, he was a dirty pig bastard, and he's <laughs> burning in hell, the pits of hell. Is he no? Was he no dodgy? I don't know. I don't know, mate. As in, if it, he was alive, he would get me to it. Oh, pretty sure, man. I think Aye. every cut was back then, but with an know. Somebody also sent me a link, and I don't know if it's true, right? But supposedly he was racist. Well, the, the, again, it was, mate. Aye. Again, the Obo. Like, the Obo. Aye. He was alive when we were colonising, like, Africa. Like, somebody had said something about that he almost moved to Jamaica. That's what it was. He, he, he volunteered to be a slave driver or something. Aye, it was in Jamaica. Something like that. Aye, it, never, it never turned out for Aye. him. It didn't so, go. fuck him, he can suck my cock. Rabbi Burns is burning in hell. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Haggis for the chippies, all right, but <laughs> I fuck Burns night, but give me a deep fried haggis, mate. I'm obsessed with haggis. I yeah. love it. Like I fucking love haggis. Yeah. That was that was gonna be the beef. So the beef's done. You're like nah. haggis is alright. No, right, I all right. get it. I mean, I'm with you, mate. Like the the whole sort of like idolization of like robert burns and i'm like i don't care like yeah. i don't give a fuck man i can barely understand what he's fucking trying to say yeah like, it turned out um he was no i'm not even gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say Go. he's autistic <laughs> terrible he did ADHD. yeah he was just a fucking idiot that couldn't speak properly hey come on you can he, cut that out he created scots there's been like a big resurgence in the scots language yeah, I've noticed that. Recently. Like, it's like, there's a lot of female poets and stuff. Yeah, there's one in particular that's, like, huge. Don't even know what her name is. Like, Lassie with Red Hair. Yes. Um, but it seems to be, like, quite popular, doesn't it? Like, yeah. there's a load of books, like, um, Graham Armstrong's Young Team, I think, in kind of Scots, yeah. you know? Um, and I think that the majority of people kind of see this as a real positive change in literature that we get to hear our own language being yeah. sort of speaking which i kind of agree with but um it seems very hip and it also seems very like i am brown tartan which i'm no into like yeah. scottish wise like it kind of makes me cringe a wee bit this whole you know like influencers on uh twitter and instagram being like oh i am brew sent me this amazing fuck off like we all know yeah. what i am brew tastes like and you're not promoting anything you know what i mean but i tweeted something very similar yesterday um it was about james mcavoy right I, I tweeted i fucking love james mcavoy he's one of the best actors out but on top of that i think he's likable he seems like a good person um he's no full of shite and he's in this uh new film on amazon prime called my boy or my son my right. son and it's good um at first when you watch it you think oh that's a wee bit bare like bare to the bones as in script wise right but i read that it's improvised and see when you when if you watch it and you realize that it's improvised it's a game changer because you're like right he's a shit hot actor it's a good story anyway i tweeted along the lines of He's a Hollywood superstar, but he's no one of these Scottish cunts that put on these stupid accents. It's like Scottish people being Scottish. What you said about the Iron Brew. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, I can't wait to get back home to my mum. Uh. I sound like Drew McIntyre <laughs> there. Totally totally did. Or, or Gerald Butler. Aye. Uh -huh. cool. You know, as a Paisley boy when I was growing up, you're like, eh. <laughs> that, aye, sounds like a Scottish advert or something that's been shot in America. Pure. Aye. It's, no, it reminds me, do you ever remember the tune, the fat sketch, where the two guys came back because their dads died, but they've emigrated to Canada and they look pure. <laughs> the water was pushing all over the flare. <laughs> yeah. My uncle was like that, mate. Like, my uncle moved to Canada in the 60s and he came back in the 90s. I just remember this Hulk Hogan looking cunt stoning in my fucking hall. I think I was coming back for like football training, I was like seven or eight, and just thinking, who the fuck's this cunt? He literally had the handlebar moustache, he had the, the the long bald, and it was like grey. So and he was like nearly seven foot tall. Yeah. So he was he looked like Hulk Hogan, literally. He was built like a tank as well. <laughs> but he was like 
the first day that he came back, he came back from my granny's funeral, right? And I always remember he was on the phone, one of the fucking turnwheel phones in the oven. Remember when the house phone was in the hall with the, you know what I mean? Had the table with the phone on it. Yeah. You know, it was like a sort of centerpiece for aye, the household. Aye, aye. He was sitting at that, speaking to somebody in Canada, and it was pure Canadian as fuck. See, by the time he went home, like five days later, he was pure, all right, mate. It like only took like three or four days for him to be like right back. And <laughs> he had been he had been living in Canada for nearly forty years. That's mental. And it just went straight back to this pure Hey brother. He started out like that, pure Hey Paul. And I'm like, yeah. Who the fuck's this cunt? My dad's like, that's your Uncle Thomas, you've never met him. I'm like, all right, okay. And then by the end of the week he was pure, oh yeah, we prick. That's mad. <laughs> I've got uncles and aunties and stuff that were all born in Easterhouse and they all stay in like Oxford now. Right. And you would think that they were posh English. Like, you are for your Easter house, you cunt. You forgot your own arse before you got your new one, as my dad would say. That was his criticism of Billy Conley. I didn't mean to if it slag Drew McIntyre there. He's actually brand new. You I've don't want him to punch fuck at you? No, I could punch fuck at him. <laughs> um, I could do him. <laughs> Clip that. <laughs> <laughs> I could do Drew McIntyre. Do, no, not, do, do, do he, your impression of him go? Um, do, you, do your Merchant City Medical? I don't, uh, two seconds. <laughs> you guys want a hair transplant? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Bobby from Scott Squad was talking shit about me. <laughs> no, he's, he's brand new. He is brand new. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever bumped into, actually. Have you ever met him, Kim? No, well, actually, no, I didn't actually. I met him when I went to WrestleMania. Aye. And we went to the access thing, and he was speaking all American. It was quite... Awkward because he he was quite low on the card at that point. Now he's the champion and all that. So yeah, but no, I never met him like properly. That was more of a fan thing. Yeah. So basically, I'm a big fan boy of him. So. Do you know he was supposed to have a wee part in Scott Squad? As right. he was supposed to do a scene with me, uh, running into the station when uh, there was a personal trainer in the station flirting with Officer Karen, and I run in and get jealous. So he was supposed to play that part. But it was as he was making a comeback, and I think he was just his schedule was crazy. So making his comeback to like the WWE. He was in the WWE, Aye. but it's when as he was skyrocketing. Aye. So I think he's he just couldn't. He, he never had time. Scott Squad no got enough clout for Big Drew. The bastard. I don't even think it was that. Nah, I think no it's way. their schedule oh. is just so crazy. Aye. Like I can't even imagine what the schedule's like because they need to maintain their physique, Aye. which is like a full-time fucking job in itself. Aye. As much as, you know, they're, they're all pretty much juicing. Okay, it's like how many days is in a year? 365. Right, so it's 365 and they do something like 200 shows or something a Aye. year. Fuck it's up. fucking mental. Aye. Sometimes it's two shows a day. Ah, it's brutal. I'd still smash them, but... <laughs> There's a big push to try and get that sorted out by somebody in America who was running for, for he's running for president and he's talking about trying to get Vince McMahon and all that done for not like giving them days off and shit like that. Yeah. So hopefully, because like, I've heard they make some work in Christmas Day and stuff. It's crazy, mate. Like even if you look at Drew McIntyre's body before, like his first run in WWE to now, yeah, it's totally, he's totally transformed himself. Can we can we talk about Vince McMahon? For a second, like, yeah. first of all, guy's a cunt, right? <laughs> Huge, massive fucking walloper, a guy. But what's happened to him? Like, I remember a guy with, like, a sort of quiff, looked like somebody's da. Like, mm -hmm. that was what I remember of Vince McMahon. He kind of, like, would bring himself into the ring and he would be, like, the butt of the joke. He'd get a bit of a doing. And then you see him now and he's, like, fucking jacked. And he's, I mean, what's that photo where he's got the chains? you seen that photo? Yeah. See, that one's quite old he's uh, fucked now he's really oh, old he? he's, he's, an, he's, he's an old guy he's, he's near the end of me I, for sure. oh really how old is he he's like I don't, he's more than 102 you know, is alive. she still alive he's still alive he's yeah. still alive eh? so he could live to fucking he fuck. must be close to 80. Uh, he needs to be surely if he's no right 80. so he's no big and, and jacked anymore so all the steroids that he took 10 years ago are coming back to bite him in the arse now are they like i mean he's probably still like or a fitness fans, but he's definitely not really for like for an old man. He looks good. I uh, just visibly his aye, face for looks old, old. For an eight but year old, he's bald, like he's still well built. Aye, fucking hell, he's, man. He's back on TV. He's back on the show Raw and all that. Yeah, doing shit. But they 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 do it pre-recorded now because he can't quite do it live as much. Yeah. So he's losing a step or two. But I'm not going to slag him off too much because I'm just started training to be a wrestler. So 
Yeah. You, you, get, you get your eye on the WWE. <laughs> get his attention by calling him a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blackballed like that. We're never going to say this guy good months because of the shit he said. Drew, you need to start talking like this, Kieran. Thank you very I, much, WrestleMania, for having me tonight. <laughs> Just a boy from Airdrie. <laughs> How are we all doing tonight? Haggis. What? Imagine yeah. doing that in a Glasgow audi audience, though. <laughs> Haggis and Iron Brew, everyone. <laughs> Complete silence. <laughs> he does it in Florida, but hey! <laughs> Mate, I can barely speak my own language, and I'm going to try to speak like that. <laughs> Wolf Gang wants me to send them in a promo, and I've done three or four attempts, and I just sound like I've, I turn into this man, American guy. Like Hulk Hogan or something. I need to figure out how to do it more naturally now. My name's Kieran Burns. And I'm going to bring you hell, man. I'm all about ability. <laughs> <Are> you? <laughs> <laughs> um, we are the cripples. Kieran, it would seem that the, the key, if you watch the 90s wrestlers, was like a fuck ton of coke. That's the key to cutting a good promo. Right. Like the, the macho man, like that guy was, is there no oh promo? Yeah. Is there no promo where he pulled out a fucking dove? Like did a magic trick or something? Like in front yeah. of the fucking camera? He was amazing. The pure I, legendary promos of the 90s. I was watching promos the other night of Ravish and Rick Rude. Oh yes, man. And uh, I was never, I think I missed him when I was young. I was more Heart Foundation and British Bulldog. So I missed right. Rick Rude, Aye. but I was watching his promos last night, man, and it was so funny. Like, see him and his manager. His manager's like acting all the fat slob shut up as he's going to talk to your women and stuff. So Bobby the Brain Heenan <laughs> Aye. is his manager. What a combo. Aye. Like, oh, perfect combo. Man. And by the way, what a fucking tank he was. Like... Um, I don't know if it was steroids or whatever. Oh, but 100% was. <laughs> I mean, but he he was a specimen. See, yeah. like... It's not just, see, with a guy like that, you're looking and you're thinking, why Why is his, why am I like so thingy on like his physique? And it's because of the, that's genetics. Like everything was pure well balanced. His chest was, his shoulders, his abs are like, he's, aye, that's when genetics come into play. If you look uh -huh. at somebody like um, Bret Hart, for instance, you're like, he's genetically not as built for this is what that guy is because he would have been on the roids he would have been in the gym so he's at sort of his peak yeah fitness but that guy rick rude he could have been a bodybuilder or something man aye like and you can get why he was like the sex symbol but i loved and he's like i i'm obviously older than you like i get into wrestling i remember the rick rude I remember Rick Rude and Jake the Snake, they had a feud and it was yeah, great. Yeah. But there was one with Macho Man where basically the story was is that he was trying to pump Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> and that was the whole story. Like, can you imagine them being like, right, we're going to make this story where this guy who's gorgeous and a pure physical specimen, he's going to try and pump your wife. Aye. And I'm going, aye, let's do that, man. Let's do that. I'd be, I'd be like, wait a minute. No, aye. fuck off. Especially nowadays. And it probably like, happened. Pure me too. I probably did pump her. Uh, they all pumped each other. <laughs> a WWF fuck fest. You ever seen the China porn though? Um, I have Aye. actually. Aye. It's quite sad, man. <laughs> That's one of the best wanks I've ever heard. This is my podcast, you're, so you're going to get me cancelled. How wanking to a porn though? I'm, I'm really that. glad to be here for the rest of the talk. Really enjoyed that. <laughs> 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 um, uh, right, okay. Bit of naked wrestling for China. She's dead, isn't she? Yeah, she is. And Did that, she not? I'm pretty sure that I've seen something on YouTube that said that the whole Triple H, Stephanie McMahon storyline of the affair was like real. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, because it wasn't supposed to be and it ended up being that she, he was smart though because it was the reason why he ended up getting so much push was because he was married to the fucking boss's daughter. But a lot of these guys you just mentioned, they're either deeds are getting there because of how they were treated. Yeah. Treat, or treated himself or goes like, back to being goes back to the fact that Vince McMahon is a dick because there's no there was no healthcare or anything like that. Sorry, I've I've looked into all this shit too much. No, that's good, man. That's good. You're the you're the fact totem. I yeah. agree. I agree with you. Have you been watching the new Afterlife with Ricky Gervais? I can't do it. How? I watched the first two seasons, right, and they were great, but. I don't know, man. It just purely makes me feel heavy flat. Like, like at the end of that season two, I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck's sake, man! This is brutal." What too sad or? I like it. Just it was. I, I just like. I get that it's a great show, and I'm sure season two is great, but it's just too deep for me, man. So yeah, I just kind of passed on it. 
for the new. I've I've not finished the third season, but I did. Fin- Have you watched it, Paul? No, I don't. Right. I, I watched like the first two episodes of season one. I was like, this isn't for me, man. Yeah. I did watch it, right? And there's a running theme of him sitting watching old recordings of having fun with his wife. And I thought by the third season, I was like, see if my wife had a camera in my face that much, I'd be fucking, I'd tell her to fuck off. (laughs) Like there's literally every single moment you can think of has been caught on camera and it makes it very easy for the story to be told. Uh So uh, I feel like that might be like, I mean, uh, that that doesn't help anybody. Like you know, mm-hmm. we we all know of an ex-professional football player. We'll not mention any names, but he regularly has like in the past when I did follow him had moments of like oh, I'm not feeling great. That if you go back on his socials and look at a precursor, he'd be sitting watching his old football career on YouTube, and it's like no, they don't feel good, mate. Like you're sitting fucking reminiscing. See yeah. if you've got like, it, like say for instance you're. John Hartson, right? And you look back fondly and you're like, I had a great career and, yeah. and I enjoy looking back at some of my goals and like reliving some of that. Nothing wrong with that. But see if you're sitting like weeping. Yeah. At like something like that. Like if if you've got aye, like a wedding video and your missus leaves you and you sit crying watching your... Destroy that fucking video. Yeah. But I think Ricky Gervais is trying to make a bit of a point of social media with the amount of media that him and his wife, I don't know, what, but did she die in it? Is it she like, died of uh, cancer. Is it cancer? I, was got, I, I thought I remembered that. Like, the amount of media that we have, see when you lose somebody or you break up with somebody, it's so fucking hard to go over it now uh-huh. because you've just got a whole bank of like fucking videos and pictures and, and you run the risk of like fucking just sitting there reminiscing and oh and it doesn't do anybody any good man no. like I, I would see the whole have you ever seen forgetting sarah marshall yes the bit where his step brother comes in and permanently deletes all the photos off the mac yeah that's what i would advise somebody to do man like just move forward like look forward don't sit and fucking uh look back and drive yourself fucking crazy like greeting at videos do you know what I, mean? I agree with that there's a process that you can do as well because Everybody in their life has uh, experienced loss to some extent. Mm -hmm. You've lost your dad, Kieran, you've lost people. Everybody's lost people. I think grief is a process, isn't it? You go through anger, regret. Yeah. Then it's like, what's the process of grief? There's like stages of grief. Uh, There's like seven stages um, and it's uh like you basically you go you deny denials one yeah acceptance is like the last one but within that there's like anger and and then it moves to like sort of sadness and and stuff like that but yeah. it's not really i don't know if it's quite it's cut and dry not but like you're saying there grief is a process and mm. it you know i suppose i'm starting to be like fuck if somebody loses their wife to cancer and I'm sitting, stop watching the videos. It's like, I'm not saying that. I'm not yeah. saying that. There's there's appropriate time yeah. for you to sit and look back and be like, remember them. Yeah. But see, while it's like that sort of like powder keg of like sadness, you need to distance yourself a wee bit to let yourself go through that period. Because see, you know, mate, I can look back at the photos of my dad and laugh. See, like yeah. you're saying, like, you've lost your dad. See, for the first, and I, I'm not exaggerating this, see, for the first four or five years after I lost him, I couldn't, I couldn't look at him. I remember a photo popping up on Facebook. My sister put a photo of him up on Facebook, and it actually shocked me when I seen it. Yeah. They're like, fuck, I wasn't expecting that. So you need to kind of, like, have a bit of a distance, let yourself get it through your head, what's actually happened, but, you know, go through the stages of grief, and then you can go back, when you can go back and you can look and go, oh, fuck, remember that, and really remember it for what it is without yeah. adding in your sadness and tap it like i'm not saying to people ah, if you lose somebody fucking delete all the cut up all the photos and stuff no but maybe create a wee bit of distance for a bit to yeah. let, let yourself yeah. get your head run it and then you can go back to it because there comes a point for sure that you look at happy memories with the person that you've lost and feel happiness again instead of yeah. just feeling this sort of like sadness about it you know what i mean but uh, what i'm i'm no slagging after life because i love ricky right i've seen him live and i think he's a genius but that's like saying uh, say that after life was like you right that's like you and your dad you've literally got him on camera doing 
everything like randomly just sitting on his couch eating his dinner uh-huh. and you're like that with a camcorder and i feel like people are we we afterlife they're so obsessed with grief that they're no looking at like mm. why are you filming that cunt eating his dinner like it, it's just like so random and odd times are like there's three yeah, seasons yeah. there's three seasons yet you've literally got her on camera doing <laughs> everything like getting a haircut getting her dinner like having a a shite. like everything yeah. what was that having a shite <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised man <laughs> fucking hell he's pure got bu- all the angles covered <laughs> pure burst into the toilet that like, surprise ah it's like almost like they had a professional film crew follow them about for their full life Aye. it's like does anybody really did the battery ever run out in that fucking camera ricky but- Plus there's a, I wouldn't say hilarious, but there's a bit that's just been totally, everybody's never really mentioned it. In the second season, there's a guy who's also dealing with grief and he, he turns to drugs and he's homeless. And uh, Rick, like the guy's suicidal and he ODs and Ricky's essentially speaks him, talks the guy into committing suicide. So it's a homeless guy that's a drug addict. Just that was really fucked up at the time. Man. Calls himself, and uh, you're like, "All right, so Ricky, Ricky's character called a cunt, and nobody's fucking said anything about it. Pretty Literally sure. just called a cunt. I'm pretty sure that's called culpable homicide. <laughs> like, it's not quite murder, but you know, uh, d- d- did you do that? Like, we're um, past the point of grief yeah. here, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was a point where I kind of checked out. To be honest, I was like, "What the fuck am I watching?" Yeah, Aye. Like, for sake. Do you think that this falls into it? And, and I don't know because I, I don't watch it. If, like, I don't know if we mentioned this in the podcast a couple of weeks ago, but I definitely spoke about it in socials. That we seem to be moving into the era of like sort of um mental health porn yeah like bad mental health pornography where people are like now almost self-indulgent and acts of like poor mental health i think did we am i getting deja vu did, did we just talk about this half well, night i think we've danced around it right i think at the time what happened was is that a guy who um doesn't listen to this so don't really give a fuck who is like an inspirational speaker had whipped the camera on an instagram and sat and cried into the camera on the third anniversary of his brother's suicide so first of all of course you gotta be sad and and but how long did it take you to set up that camera what what's the purpose of doing what you're doing i'm normalizing men being emotional and it's like but you're also selling 10 grand speaking gigs on that instagram yeah i feel like that is like porn for it you know yeah. like it they're trying to sort of like sell their personal brand which has a product and how they're doing that is like i'm normalizing men being emotional and it's like are you or did yeah. you set up that ring light and that camera and make yourself fucking cry i don't i don't i don't understand that mindset like if i'm having a personal moment if you're having a personal moment like that that's genuine yeah do you really think about putting the camera on do you really think about putting the guy had a lighting rig set up like yeah i don't i don't and and i suppose i'm then i how do you see that am i being a dick like we're going fuck's sake man like, well I, i've not seen that video but i can I, I know what you're saying because someone get called out on it last week did you see the woman the youtuber um she was in the car with her son and the dog either the dog passed the get put down the dog get put down at the vet and she had the camera on the dashboard and her son was in the passenger seat she was driving and she was like cry more no no do this no do that oh yeah do that more right more. and um she made a mistake she obviously didn't edit it and she put it out oh fuck's sake and the son was like that the son was essentially like what are you doing uh-huh. like let me cry She's like, no, cry harder, be sadder. And she's, and he was like, I'm sad, I'm crying, please don't film yeah. me. And she was just totally like a robot, like, uh, no, no. This uh, is, this is no, where no, I no. get, I get really kind of fucked off. Um, and even guys that are like, you know, like James English, for instance, who will be one of the first people to put there being like, oh, you need to speak and promoting nice mental health ideas. But then when somebody, you know, like, 
for instance, to give an, an exact example, when somebody went, listen, mate, I don't agree with you having Tommy Robinson on your podcast to be sending DMs saying he's got to punch fuck out people and like, who are you, you wee prick? These people don't believe in what they're saying. It's a way for them to perpetuate their own fucking self-interest. Well, sorry, who, who's sending DMs? James Tom? English did. Is he? He did. Oh, wow. I somebody took screenshots and put it on Twitter that the guy was basically like, Shit. <laughs> being like I don't agree with you fucking platforming mm. Tommy Robinson and he went into the guy's DMs and was like shut the fuck up delete your tweet or else something's gonna happen something to that effect yeah could be Ryan Williams saying he's gonna punch fuck out yeah. people but he was definitely calling the guy a wee prick and all that I remember that for a fact so these guys don't know what good mental health fucking look like no they, they think that they you know because it's like and then when they get that gets tested when there's a bit of pressure they crumble and it's just that, like, they don't believe in what they're... They don't believe the stink of their own shite. Like, they want you to buy into it because it's a way for them to get views on their YouTube videos. Or, like, yeah. that woman, she's literally using her son's grief about a fucking dog to platform herself. Yeah. Oh, look at us. And it's like the whole... I remember my, <laughs> I remember my mate, like, back in the day, somebody broke into his house and stole the Christmas presents, right? And, uh which is terrible, right? But it fucking happened in the scheme. But even in Times, the Evening Times article, and I always remember he brought it out when we were like teenagers and we were howling at the photo. And he was like, I was smiling. It was like the, the Evening Times photographer came around and I, he was like five or six. He's like, I was smiling for the camera. And they were like, no, you need to look sad. <laughs> Fuck's sake. And it's that, isn't it? Aye. It's like a way to sell newspapers. It's mm. just the, the modern equivalent of that. And people are using their own poor mental health and grief as a way to perpetuate uh, yeah. themselves like and let me say for just a matter of fact that that isn't the type of like we had a moment with kieran who's in the room uh, on his podcast that was a genuine fucking moment we all felt that that yeah. wasn't the same thing he didn't plan that he actually was like i didn't want this to happen but it's happening so i'm going to do it yeah that's a very different thing but it's trying to differentiate between the disingenuineness and the genuine is really fucking hard now yeah because everybody seems to be an actor and I've, being... I've got a couple of people on my social media on instagram and i know a guy that's a a fucking a two-week therapist and uh he'll post a picture of a lion and it'll be like a tom hardy quote behind it and i'm like uh, you're charging 50 quid to help people or it's like uh pk blinders it's always a quote for Peaky Blinders or Al Pacino or Denzel Washington. Will mm. Smith seems to be popping up as well. And you're like, Will Smith mm. didn't say that. So it's like, um, I've seen a couple of disturbing things as well. Like see these fake mental health guys um, when they post TikToks and they're like miming to shit. Mm -hmm. I'm like that. If I was a psychiatrist or a mm. doctor, I would be like, he's red flag, man. Like to kind of put up fake crime videos and aye, this is it, isn't all it? That yeah. shit. Aye, this is this is what I've got a problem mm -hmm. with. I don't have a problem with men crying. I don't have a problem with men being emotional. But see, when you're like fake crying or like fake cries for help, or it just it it jet manipulation. <sighs> it is. It really is, isn't it? It's like yeah. a, it's a type of emotional ma manipulation. People buy into what you're you're selling. Basically, yeah. you're selling something behind this message of you know i'm here to help yeah. when you'll know it's like and and it's virgin on narcissistic for me yes it's very very close to the bone of narcissism you know what i mean um and i've i've been in rooms with these fake mental health cunts and heard people say stuff along the lines of like i have helped people um, like I heard one of them go, I've saved lives. Mm. You <laughs> save yourself, mate. <laughs> that me. must be see see for me, I get so annoyed with things, right? See, when I find something that annoys me, it does make me obsessed, right? It could be cold water therapy, it could be people that abuse AA. But see, because you're an actual real therapist and you've put so much of your life into that process and you've went to uni and you've done everything that's needed to be done to be a real professional therapist mm. and then you get some kind of like that, that must be mental. It must be like it's like playing for Barcelona and somebody for Peter's Hill saying that you're shite. You're like, what? Well, Get the fuck. The, the way that I've came here, I've I struggled with that a lot, mate. Especially during the pandemic and during lockdown, where everybody, 
and their ma decided to pivot when their career be- f- through necessity in one of the very seems popular pivot points because it's popular and because it's trendy as mental health and the mental health industry and and yeah. the way that even the way that PTs are trying to capitalize on it and and that it, it really does upset me but this is this is how I calm myself down and don't get annoyed with it they are giving they're giving me a gift they're demonstrating everything to me that I don't want to be and so instead of getting annoyed just look at it like that the reason that I get annoyed at this type of thing is because I have in my head took the correct path like I decided to become a mental health professional and I've been working my way through that for nearly eight years yeah and even though I'm certified and qualified I still am learning every day I'm like twice a week on getting taught new things um so I know that I'm that I'm good at what I'm doing and and that I'm a professional and just because there's people out there that are taking advantage of this sort of epidemic that we're seeing in mental health that doesn't mean to say that I need to get angry at them just more well what am I doing today to make sure that I'm not them and that's how I use it to sort of fuel my personal fire yeah and not get too caught up in I fucking hate these cunts and they're dangerous and they're going to hurt people and, yeah and I should speak out about this you know what I mean as much as I, I take every opportunity to speak out about it. every pro I mean mine's is not as intense as yours because it's people's mental and physical health and life's are on the line with, with your industry but I get like that when people say that they're stand-up comedians like I'll use James English as an example a couple of years ago, the Sun newspaper, he was walking down the street, right? I don't dislike James English. I don't have any kind of feelings towards him. But he was walking down the street um, one day and he was live streaming a Facebook live video. And he was just cutting all these old school jokes, like rapid one-liners, uh, like Morkham and Wise shit. And it was right. just rapid, non-stop. And... It was funny, but it was, you're like, oh, that's uh, more common wise. That's uh, like, name an old comedian. It was one of their jokes. I like fucking so, Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. Like, I like aye, so. dad jokes. I it was like <clears throat> Christmas cracker jokes. Right. And you know, it was funny and people enjoy it and stuff. But then the son wrote a story saying James English, stand up comedian. And it was who else did they call a stand-up comedian see do you ever remember that viral video that went it went viral obviously um somebody's family member died and she was standing beside the grave and she uh, was james english had her on his podcast she was, uh, yeah. so she Mel was like Poverty my Pong. boy lollipop i remember it mate Aye. so it says james english and whatever her name was both stand-up comedians and I, f- I went like, are they fuck stand-up comedians? I'm sure he's a failed stand-up comedian. Did he not try and be a stand-up comedian and it went badly wrong for him? I don't know. I'm pretty sure s- I, I read sense. a story somewhere that he did a couple of, he did one or two gigs and it was just like, nah, this isn't for me, before he did his podcast. Oh, really? Uh, I'm pretty sure, or just at the start of his podcast. Well, I, I don't mean to bad mouth him and I'm sure he wasn't calling himself a stand-up comedian, but Aye. when that shit happens, I'm like, nah, you're not a stand-up comedian like don't disrespect my industry like you need to start off as an open spot and build yourself up and you know you get people like Lemmy or Paul Black or you know they morph into their own beautiful thing and they're doing their own thing and they're very successful and they're very funny and they're very good at what they do Mm -hmm. but you can't do one fucking gig or you can't live stream yourself on a video and then say you're a stand-up comedian it's like playing a game of five of sides and then all of a sudden you want to play for Selic I'm a professional football player (laughs) that's the exact same thing it doesn't happen you you know and it's like disrespectful towards the industry as well because say for instance right someday in your family that doesn't give a fuck about stand-up comedy goes to the stand comedy one night right and they don't care about live comedy they don't give a fuck about kevin bridges or frankie boyle they're there for a pint because it's a christmas night out they go to the stand or a comedy club and someday like james english walks up and says that they're a stand-up comedian he does stand-up comedy and he's shite, your family member's going to say, that guy was shite, I'm never going back to a live comedy again. Aye. And then they'll never go back to a live 
comedy night. Aye, sort but of then tarnishes. they could go and tell their pals at work the next day, oh, I was at the stand and there was a guy Aye. on and he was pish. Aye, and then they'll go, uh-huh. Aye, I'm not going to go. It tarnishes the reputation of overall stand-up comedy in Scotland if yes. you allow people to just tell you that they're a stand-up comedian when actually all that they've ever done is like a TikTok or aye. you know what I mean like aye there's 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 a lot of, there's a lot of this mate there, there is a I've known there. about it myself like the Glasgow Comedy Festival right sadly they were just letting any cunt do fucking shows at one point yeah. and I'm no slagging them because I love them like a family but you've got comedians that can you shouldn't you should not do a solo show if you cannot do an hour see if you can stand on the stage for one hour and make people laugh get away from doing a solo show right so i know comedians that have maybe popular on social media and they're like fuck i can sell tickets i'll sell tickets for 13 quid when they're still an open spot they'll go and then they'll get fucking four support acts and then they'll go up and they'll do half an hour and then they've got all their support acts then 10 minutes each and it's essentially you know you've got free open spots then 10 minutes and mm-hmm. then you've got the really good open spot closing the fucking show uh-huh. for 13 quid a ticket i mean when bridges started off he wasn't even charging for 13 quid a ticket anyway Aye, but this is, over. this is where influencer cultures leading us into is that they can now sell they can do what they like like this comes back to um jake paul yes and the paul brothers you know like basically using their social media presence to you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna filter what i was gonna say pretend to be a professional fighter yeah like fighting guys that are not boxers in a boxing match and then claiming to be a boxer yeah. like fight a fucking boxer i because see when you look at that woodley fight i think it, it looks like he took it it Definitely. looks like he fucking took a dive, man. No a dive, it looks like he took the hit deliberately. Aye, aye. It, I think all of this is all aye. wrestling. Bring aye. it back to aye. wrestling. Aye. It's all a show. See, if I was Woodley and they said, I'll give you one million pounds if you let me knock you out, I'd be like, fucking knock me out right now. Well, the guy was getting paid fucking 250k for a title fight in the UFC and could potentially die. You know, like you're going to fucking fight another killer. In yeah. an octagon so if he's willing to do that would he be willing to throw himself down to the canvas for two and a half million dollars absolutely who fucking wouldn't he do that yeah. who wouldn't he take a dive for that and it does definitely look like that but this is where the influencer culture sort of taking is that these people don't need to put and and it's no it's no really anything against them like uh-huh. slagging them it's no slagging them it's just looking at it and going do we really want to begin doing this road where people can just build a following in social media like mate I, i've seen people being like singer songwriter and you go on their socials and there's no music yeah there's like Aye. four thousand followers and the lassie's hot and she sings britney spears covers into her airpods Aye. that's not a singer songwriter like that's the and this all sort of began with reality tv uh-huh. x factor where yeah, a karaoke singer i that's basically what it is and and that, that's where we are and you know unfortunately for fucking ugly white guys like me you know i don't i'm not getting I'm <laughs> <And> not, me <laughs> um well fucking hell i look like a ghost is it me or do i look white as fuck there hey. slimer <laughs> <laughs> so i've got a friend he's an actor and comedian very talented boy he's done panto for many years he's just wrote a, a book called me, myself and Weed, um, he's just wrote it and it's came out a couple of days ago and it seems to have hit the ground running. I've got a copy but I haven't managed to read it but it's his experience about mental health and smoking weed and he's a good guy. I'm not getting paid for this, I'm just giving a friend a shout out. If anybody's into like mental health and drugs and recovery and stuff, I do highly recommend it. You're going to see Jerry on podcasts soon. I would get him on as a guest, but I don't get guests. It's just my own thing. Um, So check him out. He's got Twitter, he's got Facebook, and Paul's going to stick up a wee uh, picture of his book on the screen. So Stick a link to the Amazon in the description as well. Thank you very much, mate. So like I said, I'm not getting paid for that. I'm just helping out a friend. So getting about it. So we'll wrap it up. I've got a couple of things to say. I, I, we'll end on a, a 
funnier note. Positive note. Yes. I, was, I noticed this last night when Jackie McNamara followed me on Twitter and I thought that's so random and weird to me as a mad Celtic fan. But basically I've wrote down, um, and you can answer this as well, Kieran, who is the weirdest or like the most surreal or the most famous people that follow you on Twitter? I've got a long list here of strange names, but I'll let um, Paul and Kieran go first. <sighs> I don't have many celebrities. I think like John Hartson. I like people that I meet through podcasting. Mm -hmm. Um, or sort of like celebrities have followed me. Like um, Chris Sutton follows me. Aye, weirdly yeah. enough, he's a good lad. I think I said something about four years ago in reply to one of his tweets or something, and, and I got a follow. But I like Sutton and Hartson. It's surreal because I sat as a teenager and watched them at Celtic Park and yeah. I find I find it more surreal being in the room with them. Like if they come in to do a podcast and somebody like that's actually in the room uh -huh. and you just realise that they're actually just a human being with their own insecurities and their own yeah. flaws. That's the surreal bit for me where you're like, fuck, these people should I, I've got this idea that they're pure super confident and like of course they'll be really self assured and then they come into the room you're like, Oh fuck, you're just an odd person. Which yeah. I think is a positive surrealness. It's not like a disappointment. It's more of a like I think that's really cool that mm. somebody like Barry Ferguson would be nice, one, because I always grew up thinking he was a wee prick. But uh -huh. two, that he would be like, Oh, how in a break, how am I doing? And you're like, What mate? You fucking kidding on? But I so um I like Football players that I watched growing up, similar to sort of Jackie Mack and Aye. Simon Donnelly, I'd find that very surreal as well. What about you, Kieran? Uh, no, that's, that's a pretty good answer. I, I feel the same about John Hartson, man. He follows me, so he's pretty cool. But actually, it's funny you are talking about this now, because last night, Gradle followed me on Instagram, and I was pure marking the fuck out for that shit, man. <laughs> I was like trying to get his attention for the past three years, man. I was heavy buzzing about that. Um, but it's... It is weird when you when you meet people that you pure look up to and you realise who like they're just a normal person. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's like yeah, this idea built in your head that they're going to be some sort of superhuman yeah. person, and then you meet them and you're like, oh, they have some issues as well. Yeah, <laughs> like, just know? a human being. Uh, so probably Gredo followed me last night and Sai Ferry as well. Sai Ferry, uh, he's he just uh, listening to his podcast all the time. So getting to actual talk time with me him was was very much um, an interesting conversation because he. You think that he's just always pure funny all the time. Yeah. But he's got a very real side to him as well, do you know what I mean? So, it's like Paul said, it's good to see people, like the real side of people. Good. Right, well, who's on your list? User are all, they are shiters compared to me. Right, let's yeah. hear it. <laughs> Try, I was trying to think of something funny there, Mate, but there wasn't a real joke I'm, on it. You're a celebrity. Well, I'll go with the first one, right? I don't know how to pronounce his second name, but his first name is Dev, Devin Sawa, H S. A W A, Devin Sawa, uh -huh. and he was the wee guy that was in Casper. He was the main. <laughs> he was the main character in Casper. The wee and guy that played Casper at the end of the movie. Yes, right. And he went on, and he was in a film called Idle Hands. Right, I remember Idle. All oh, right, yeah. Was, was right, so the wee guy that was the main guy in Idle Hands out of the two, that was the. The, the the big dude that was in all the eighties sort of teenage things. Uh -huh. He was the wee guy who played Casper. And right? he Hands is a great movie, man. A, an amazing film, by the way. I watched it recently, and he was also in the very first um, horror film. What's it called? Final Destination. So he was right. Aye. aye, aye, aye. So he follows me on Twitter. Um, that was the first one. I've got Dave Sh Dave Sheridan. Do you know who that is? Not a Scooby man. No. This is one I'm like totally buzzing with. Special Officer Duffy for the scary movie for him. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. By the way, see in real life, he is a sexy bastard. Right. Like proper ripped to shreds. Right. Handsome as fuck. Remember the end of scary movie when he sort of comes out of the Duffy character and he sweeps his hair back and that? You're like, right, okay. Aye. Yeah, right, aye. Sexy That's bastard. That's cool. That's cool as fuck. Chris Candy. Who's that? John Candy's son. You no kidding? way, man, really? Yep. The legend. He's a comedian and he lives in LA. Right. And he's a good lad. How did you fucking get a foley for him? So remember when I was talking about Norm MacDonald and I tweeted about Norm MacDonald saying he's very similar to Chris Can uh, Chris uh, Farley, 
and uh-huh. John Candy. John Candy. Yep, yep. Chris Candy seen the tweet and he said, "This is awesome." And he followed me. Nice one. Nice one. Um, Get him on the podcast, man. Fuck's sake, you're listening to that chat. Do you know he said he would come on the podcast? Do it, mate. Yep. Definitely do that. I'd listen to that, man. I do as him call. Jerry O'Connell. Who's that? He is. You want to take a guess, Kieran? Uh, fucking. Head of the IRA. I know, wait, that. But you see, no. <laughs> I feel like I, I definitely know this name, man, but I'm not going to guess that. I'm, right. No, I didn't sleep, mate. He's the wee fat guy you're to stand by me. Is he? Yep. What, what, what is his name? The wee fat guy, he's also a sexy bastard with a six pack now as well. See, how do people. I feel like I go to the gym all the time and I've not seen any abs for the, my whole life. What's happening with that? <laughs> abs are made in the kitchen, mate, not in the gym. That's why. Don't give, don't give me that push, man. I don't hear it. I don't hear it's that. That's true, though. I want to go to the gym and eat pizza, mate. You need, no to, be, you need to be skinny to get abs. The uh, gym uh, is in the kitchen. Right. <laughs> 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 Chris Catan. Um, see, I feel like we should know these no. names. I've, you will know who it is. He's a very funny American stand-up comedian that used to be on Saturday Night Live. Right. He was on Saturday Night Live when Will Ferrell was on it, and he was also in the film with Will Ferrell, A Night at the Roxbury. Ah, I know who that dude is. The wee guy. Uh-huh. Um, um, what else was he on? If I'd seen his picture, I would definitely know who that is. What else was he in? Chris Catan? Like, yes. This is making me realise how much I don't know about things. They're recognising the names and going, ah, who are you'll, they? you'll absolutely know his name. Uh, he is fucking hilarious. I, um, fucking, he was in the House in Haunted Hill 99 remake. That's what I remember him for, but he was also an undercover brother. Apparently. Yes. Oh, is that in the remake? And can remake? you check if you're on his internet movie database? He was in a short horror film, right? Um, it was quite recent, and it's uh, it wasn't on for long. I think it was on for like twenty five minutes or something. One of his most recent credits, I think it was like. Oh. Let's have a swatch, man. Um, he was uh, he's done some amazing all time classic Saturday Night Live sketches. Hassle at the castle. No, it's no. not that. Um, selfie. I'll need to double check. How do you spell this guy's name? Um, just as it said, Katan, K-A-T-A-N, I think, or double T. He also broke his neck doing a sketch on Saturday Night Live. Did he? During a sketch, he slipped and snapped his fucking... How did you get that follow? Oh, mate, of course I know who that is. I think uh, he, he just followed me because it was a blue tick. <laughs> <laughs> following me back. Aye, uh, that's, that's, that seems to be the way. A mutual follow way. back. Yeah. How did you get your blue tick? How does one know that I'm, I've got any motivation to do that? But how do you get a blue tick on Twitter? So I, someone at the BBC did it for me right. years ago. Contacts. She just said we're going to try and get all the squad squad people blue blue ticks, and I I just said I. Good for the brand. So she done it, and I was like, fair enough, that's all right. I want a blue tick, man. Discrimination. But you're a piece of shit. <laughs> See, this makes me go home and cry tonight, you know that? <laughs> pure, pure saying something, dude, do you believe that? And just sitting there, just phone, fuck it. You know I love you. Shut up. I know. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like I'm bullying you, doesn't know, it? You? He's, he's, he's going to try and put his dick Right, fuck this horror movie. The Passenger. The Passenger, right. 20 minutes. Um, it's was he like the main character? Yeah, it's like a one-man yeah. film. Driving right. through the desert en route to San Francisco, Sebastian has a chance encounter with Helena, a mysterious and attractive hitchhiker. Ooh. Together they embark on a journey to the unknown, testing the boundaries of reality along the way. Have you seen it? Sounds like a porn movie, we asked. Um, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've seen it. It was all right. Aye. I mean, he's a proper slapstick comedian and a serious horror film, right. so it's fucking weird. But uh-huh. it was good. So Chris Catan, um, I've put down Jackie McNamara. He stopped to ten. Hail, hail. Uh, Georgia Smith. You might know who that is, Kieran. It's funny how you look at me as if I'm going to know these. Like, I know, I know the names, but like me, I don't know anything about any sort of. I don't keep. Call yourself a wrestling fan. I know, um, there's a wrestling, no, 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 no. see. British Bulldog's daughter. British Bulldog's daughter, man, see. David Boy Smith. I should yes. know. He was, he, was he, his son actually was in WWE for a bit as well, years ago. Yes. And 
But he was also called Davis Boy Smith. Aye, he was Davis Boy Smith Junior, wasn't he? Another family member of the Hart Foundation, and that side of the family that has been painfully underused. He, when he was in the WWF, he had the potential to really be Definitely. successful, and they just never used him to Who? his ability. His son. Oh, really? But also, you could say that with the I British bet he's da- Aye, He was a tank, man. He never Aye. really ever. He never got... won the belt either. No, I think he, he. I remember him being European champion. Remember when that was a thing? But I remember when he won that. I don't think he was intercontinental either. He was. Or oh, was he? Was, uh, Essentially, right. he's won everything apart for the championship. The heavyweight title. And it was a fucking crime to wrestling the fact that he's never won that own heart never won it either Harry Piper as well never won it that is disgraceful man I know it. it's like scripted and stuff he but should have won him. he was the main event of the rest of me never won and never won the world title man. that's it's crazy ah, he used to be the heel didn't he he was yeah. like the Hulk Hogan's nemesis I've, I've well. put this on record that see when I was young and struggled through childhood man Davy Boy Smith was my fucking hero like I, cry, I remember crying uh, it was uh, in the house against Shawn Michaels when he pinned him to win the championship and Gorilla Monsoon came out and changed it and says he never pinned him properly and I just sobbed tears man and uh, they were in the Royal Rumble once as well and the Bulldog uh, chucked Michaels over the rope and his two feet never hit the ground he pulled himself back over the ropes and chucked Davy Boy over I remember that I was fucking heartbroken that's why he was a heartbreak kid I know. So the last guy, <laughs> have you seen him now though? He looks I've, like he's been eating fucking poison. Who's that? Uh, <laughs> you may. The, the, the he's been in Chernobyl. Hi. <laughs> no, they're doing their own heart tournament in that AEW version. Brilliant. They're, they're going to do a big tribute to him and all that. Oh, Good. That's so, class, man. I'm looking forward to watching that. Aye. Own heart tournament, yeah. Last guy, um, Jim Cummings. Not super famous and not a lot of people might know who it is, but he is an amazing director that lives in America and he is doing some serious shit like self self funded films. Right. Uh that are just he's kinda skipped getting producers and the go ahead for himself for these big uh production companies. He did a film called Fury Road about a a police officer that loses a family member and it's the process of him going through a mental breakdown yeah i've seen it amazing yeah i didn't know that that was that i've seen fury road but it's fucking incredible mate absolutely amazing so it was so it was funded by fans essentially right through patreon and my donations and stuff like that and he's i think that's the way forward mate yeah He's done it with like three or four different films since then, and I the guy's amazing. I think I've mentioned this on the podcast actually. He was see the new Halloween movie. Mm-hmm. He had a part in that. He had a wee bit part. Oh really? And I was like, no way, man! Fucking Jim. Uh, so I uh, he's a good guy, and um, I would say follow him on Twitter if you're listening because he's got some good shit. So that's us. That's it. I think that's an hour on it. Hi mate. Aye, that's plenty of time. Look, we'll wrap it up. Is that all right? Aye, mate. Kieran, thank you for sitting in today. No worries, mate. I've really enjoyed it, and thanks for having me. It was lovely. Thank you. It was a bit more funny than our last conversation, wasn't it? No, that was a lovely conversation. <laughs> you can check that out on Kieran's uh, podcast, All About Ability. Before I go, I need to give a shout out to Merchant City Medical again. Thank you for sponsoring the podcast getting about it like i says if you're self-conscious about hair loss phone them paul will sort you out um i want to thank everybody for the shares and the likes and the comments it means a lot uh, when you get in touch it's very kind and it's appreciated uh, merchant city medical cover the bills of the studio so if you would like to give me some money uh, you can donate a coffee through the coffee app and that will just go towards me living being alive <laughs> your baby oil for your Hi. your oily wanks what? <laughs> <laughs> so um i so if you enjoy the podcast can you rate it and share it and all that kind of stuff because when it keeps doing well i'll keep doing it and it's it's really that simple so thank you to paul for the help I feel like this is a fucking Oscars. Thank you very much to Kieran. And never forget, Robbie Burns was a whore master. Robbie Burns?
Bobby Burns was a Hörmeister. Aye. Der Bobby Burns starb. Ha! Ha, gesagt! 